Today's video is going to be all about my top 10 fragrances from Stefan Humbert Lucas. So if you want to find out more, please do keep on watching. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you are visiting. Thank you so much for joining me today. As I already mentioned in the intro, today I'm going to be doing a video all about my top 10 fragrances from Stefan Humbert Lucas. And this is a brand that I absolutely adore, so I can't wait to share with you my thoughts. I'm going to do a top 10, but I'm not going to rank them all. I'm just going to finish with my top three fragrances because I found it a little bit too difficult to rank my top 10 to be quite honest with you. But before we get started on the video, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel if you do not already. It really helps me out and I would love to have you as part of this amazing community. So now that's out of the way, let's get started on the first fragrance. So the first fragrance is Ruby Naga. Apologies, this bottle is extremely shiny, so I'm probably going to have to turn it away from the camera. And Ruby Naga is a Harrods exclusive, and it is well worth hunting down, especially if you are not from the UK. Harrods do ship internationally because Ruby Naga is one of the most beautiful fruity almondy vanillas in my collection. It's like a pillowy cloud of goodness. You get a little bit of creamy almond. I think there's a little bit of raspberry in here too. Lots and lots of vanilla. It's a little bit cakey, but not super gourmand. None of Stefan Humbert Lucas fragrances are done in that way. They always have a little bit of a unique edge to them. There's a little bit of peach, there's a little bit of lychee, but then I'm getting the Oris, which gives it a grounded, earthy creaminess. There's a little bit of jasmine too, and then there's lots of vanilla and amber in the base. I would highly recommend trying to get a decant of this one if you've never smelt it, but Ruby Naga is 100% in my top 10 fragrances from the house. Next up, we have Crying of Evil, and this is one of the most gorgeous leather fragrances in my collection. It is a fruity leather, lots of berries, then you've got that suede leather. It's absolutely gorgeous. I will say James, my husband, wears this more than me, but I absolutely adore it when he wears this one. It is one of the most beautifully composed leather fragrances in our collection, as I've already mentioned. There's some spices. It's also got violet and tuberose up top, which really does give this such a unique DNA, which you expect from this. This house. The leather is prominent, very, very prominent, but because it's balanced with those florals and the berries, and then you get in lots of complex spices, the sandalwood, amber, musk. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. One you definitely need to try if you are a fan of leathers, but you want something just a little bit different. I feel like Crying of Evil can be worn in all seasons too. This is a leather fragrance that can be pulled off in the summer due to those other notes, the florals, the fruitiness. So yeah, Crying of Evil is absolutely in my top 10 from the house too. Next up, we have Lady White Snake. And this one is a fan favorite from the house, specifically for the ladies. This is one of the most gorgeous white florals on the market with a heavy dose of tuberose. And if you watch my channel, you will know I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of tuberose, but this fragrance has been done in the most beautiful way where I can really enjoy this tuberose. It's not too heady at all. And I believe there's a little bit of leather or a slight animalic note in here, which balances those florals. Yeah, you're getting a lot of big white florals in the opening. Very, very feminine, very elegant. It's pure. It would make a beautiful wedding fragrance too. It's just so well done. It's 
creamy, there's magnolia in here, there's lots of musk in the base. And then I believe they use a white leather note. It's just got this real unique DNA to it for a white floral. And there's lots of reviews of this one on YouTube. So if you are a white floral lover, I would highly, highly recommend going to check out Lady White Snake because this might become your new favorite fragrance. It deserves being in the top 10 because this is a tuberose dominant fragrance that I really enjoy. I think this has been masterfully composed and it is just very, very ethereal and elegant. Next up, we have Rose Di Petra and I have this seven mil decant here. I also have lots of two mil samples of this one too. This will absolutely be the next purchase that I make from the house. It is a gorgeous, spicy, complex rose. So if you like rose fragrances, but you like them with a little bit of spice, there's some cumin in here and some other kind of complex spices too. You will probably enjoy Rose de Petra. It is more of an autumn winter scent in my opinion, and this is completely unisex. It would smell incredible on anyone. You've got lots of rose as the name suggests, but you've also got a note of pomegranate, which gives this a slight bitter fruitiness. And there is also a note of lychee, which brings a sweet fruitiness as well. One of my favorite notes of cardamom in the base. And then as I've already mentioned, lots of spices, including cumin. Rose Di Petra is phenomenal and I can't wait to pick a full bottle up of this one. But if you are into your complex spicy roses, then this is one that I would suggest you get your nose on. Next up, Taklamakan. Hope I'm pronouncing this one correctly. I sampled this one for the first time at Essence in Milan and both James and I really fell in love with it, specifically James, he absolutely adores this one. And I would say this is a very complex benzoin vanilla. There's a little bit of iris in here, there's florals. There's quite a lot going on. It's got this unique profile about it. It is slightly powdery, but then you're getting lots of that kind of resinous, Benzoin, and you're getting the vanilla. There's a little bit of labdanum too. There's patchouli, it's musky. It's one that you could wear all year round, any occasion. I think it blossoms on the skin. It's absolutely one that needs to be tried on the skin rather than paper. And I'm so glad we now have it in our collection. James actually purchased this one for me, slash him. So there was a deal on the Stefan Humbert Lucas website where if you spent X amount of money, you got a fragrance free, which I'm gonna be talking about soon. It is Pink Boa, I will just say it now. Pink Boa was getting a lot of hype because unfortunately it was a Russian exclusive, so it wasn't easy to get your hands on. But then they did this offer where if you spent X amount of money on the website, you got Pink Boa free. So James went ahead and picked up Taclaman and Crying of Evil so we could get the bottle of Pink Boa free. So that was a little bit of story time behind this purchase. It's very new to our collection, but we both absolutely adore it. I will do more detailed reviews in a future video to come. I'm just sharing with you my top 10 recommendations, but Taklamakan is just the most gorgeous, kind of musky, vanillic, benzoin, sandalwood fragrance. I highly recommend getting a sample of it. And if you have tried it, please do let me know down in the comments below because this one is really special. Okay, so now we are getting down to my top five fragrances and I will put a little bit of an order together for these, only for the top three, not for the top five, but this one nearly made it to the top three. I think some of you might be quite shocked but the next fragrance is God of Fire. And I absolutely adore this fragrance. I think it is incredible, but there are also lots of other incredible fragrances within the Stefan Humbert Lucas collection. And God of Fire was getting so much hype last year for good reason, in my opinion, one of the best mango fragrances in my collection, for sure. It's mango, it's ginger. There's, I think, berries in here. It's zesty. You've got lemon, you've got tonka, you've got oud. There's amber. I'm sure many of you have already smelt God of Fire before. 
This one has astronomical projection on me at least anyway. It gets so many compliments and I will absolutely be rocking this again for summertime because this shines in the heat like no other. But God of Fire is just an incredible mango ginger fragrance with a little bit of lemon, a little bit of red berries. Highly recommend you sample it. I think it's stunning. Another fragrance in my top five is Panthea Iris. And this is a relatively new addition to my collection too. And in my opinion, my favorite Iris fragrance of the moment. This one is absolutely phenomenal. So if you are a fan of Iris, then you might want to try and get a decant of this one because I just think this is perfection in a bottle. It is iris, it is violet, it is sandalwood, it is musk. Oh, just phenomenal. There's a little bit of tangerine in here too. You've got a teeny bit of bergamot, a teeny bit of jasmine, and there is also a little bit of tobacco. But what I mostly get from it is a blast of gorgeous purple florals, specifically iris, a little bit of violet. It's not too powdery, it's just the right amount. So elegant, so effortless. You are gonna smell like a goddess if you wear Panthea Iris. I cannot wait to start rocking this one a lot more. Like I said, it's very new to my collection, but I am head over heels for it. It is masterfully done, in my opinion, as with all of the fragrances that I'm discussing in this video. It is a brand that I adore. I think my first ever video on YouTube was actually a Stefan Humbert Lucas review. So you can see I have a little bit of an affinity with this brand already. But if you're a fan of musky iris fragrances, then yes, please check out Panthea Iris because I think it is gorgeous. Please do wear it on the skin though. I don't think you should ever sample iris or musky fragrances on paper. They just blossom on individual skin chemistry. We are at the point where we are going into my top three and then I have a bonus fragrance at the end. So the fragrance that ranks number three for me is Sand Dance. And I've spoken about this one quite a lot on my channel. It is an incredible, incredible boozy gourmand fragrance. It's very unique. There's quite a lot going on in here. It has notes of coriander. It has whiskey. It has cacao. It smells like an Irish cream liqueur to my nose. So yummy. Lots of sandalwood in the base too. You've got cashmere and tonka bean, benzoin. This is just phenomenal to my nose. Completely unisex. It's like a hug in a bottle to me. I think this has been masterfully done. I would give anyone a compliment wearing this. It's just fantastic. Boozy, creamy, woody, little bit of tonka bean, a little bit of benzoin. Sand Dance is a real showstopper in my opinion, and I think it deserves a top three placement. I have reviewed this one a few times on my channel. Highly recommend it if you like a boozy gourmand that's a little bit creamy, but has also a unique edge to it too. Some of you might have expected this next fragrance to be in the number one spot, but it is number two in this list. And it is none other than one of my trusty favorites, Venom Incarnate. Chef's Kiss, one of my favorite fragrances in my collection. This one is Femme Fatale Sexy. I absolutely think it's incredible. It's not just Femme Fatale Sexy. This would smell so sexy on a man too. It is a strawberry and caramel fragrance with a little bit of woodiness. There's cinnamon and leather in the base. And this one is just so sexy to my nose. Firstly, I'm getting a big blast of that strawberry. And I just love strawberry in fragrances, but then you're getting that caramel note come through. And in the initial blast, you're kind of like, whoa, strawberry and caramel, I was not expecting that. 
But as it starts to get more deeper into the scent, you're getting the cinnamon, you're getting the cedar, you're getting lots of that leather in the base. And I think if you don't like leather, I would still try this one out just in case. But this is exactly the type of composition that I really enjoy wearing. I think it's incredible incredibly sexy as I already mentioned. There's lots of tonka bean and vanilla in the base too so you're getting a beautiful sweetness. There's already sweetness to be fair from the strawberry and the caramel but there's also a patchouli note that balances this beautifully alongside the cedar and the cinnamon. I absolutely think this one's incredible if you have not already guessed so this one well and truly deserves a number two spot in this video for my personal tastes. And the number one spot goes to Soleil de Jada Mango Kiss. Now there are three different fragrances within the Soleil de Jada lineup. This one specifically is Mango Kiss and wow, wow, wow. This absolutely blew my socks off. It is the most incredible fragrance in my humble opinion. It has mega longevity and the most crazy scent bubble. Whenever James wears this one, I'm in love. My best friend likes to steal it when she comes over here and I'm in love. I just think it is so gorgeous. And the reason why I picked this one in the number one spot over God of Fire is I feel like this just has a little bit more of a unique DNA and the mango is a lot creamier in here. There's this really interesting note of chamomile which balances off the mango really well and gives it an almost slightly herbal touch, only slightly. But then you've also got ylang ylang, orange blossom, there's coconut, there's lots of amber in here too. But the thing I love most about it is there's an iris butter note in the base and then also lots of vanilla. Incredible, incredible, incredible fragrance. I adore it. I think you already know I adore it. It's mango, but it's not too tropical sweet and in your face. These other notes like the iris butter, the ylang ylang, the chamomile, just creates this incredibly unique DNA. I would highly recommend sampling it first if you can, because it is very unique. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a safe blind buy, but it is the most creamy, unique mango fragrance in my collection. And that is why this one is in the number one spot for me. So Mango Kiss gets a big chef's kiss from me. And a bonus fragrance for the end, which gets an honorable mention from me, is none other than the very elusive Pink Boa, which I'm so happy to now have in my collection. I've already explained the story behind this. It was a free gift with purchase when you spent X amount of money on the website. And James very thoughtfully bought this for me because he knew I really wanted it. So... <laughs> Pink Boa was not in my top 10 because there's so many incredible fragrances from the house and there's so many incredible fragrances that should or could have made this list too. Because like I said, I just really enjoy the fragrances that Stefan Humbert Lucas creates. I'm thinking off the top of my head, like Mortal Skin is incredible. O'Hara is incredible. The other Soleil de Jeddah fragrances are incredible too. And Pink Boa is beautiful. But compared to the top 10 that I just went through, I don't feel like it necessarily deserved a top 10 space, but it is a very, very fun fragrance. Two of the main notes are raspberry and vodka, and you absolutely get both of those notes. And the blackberry, there's a lot of blackberry coming through here. And it just smells like a very fruity cocktail, or it smells a little bit like love heart sweet. It's actually very unique in comparison to the normal Stefan Humbert Lucas DNA, in my opinion. One of my family members actually described it as smelling a little bit like a lush store. And I can see where they're going with that because it's very sugary, sweet, powdery, very fruity. But yeah, I just wanted to mention Pink Boa at the end because I know some of you might be curious about this one. I will do a more detailed review in a future video, but I had to give it a little bit of a shout out within this list. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was very difficult to get to a top 10, as I already mentioned. There are so many incredible fragrances that I've also missed from this list. But what I would really like to know from you is if you've tried any fragrances from this house, which ones are your favorites and which ones do I need to get my nose on next? Because I'm clearly collecting them and I would still like to add more to my collection. Thank you so much for joining today. It's been a pleasure as always. I hope to see you all in a future video to come. Thank you so much and goodbye.